Back. A person of interest this morning is Devlina Sarkar, a Kolkata-born scientist who once studied electronics, is now at the center of a breakthrough that could change brain treatment forever. Devlina graduated from IIT Dhanbad and is now a professor at MIT. Her work has led to a stunning new technology that could treat the brain without surgery. It's called Circulatronics. Microscopic wireless chips tiny enough to be injected into the bloodstream straight up. The hope is that one day this could help treat Alzheimer's, epilepsy, brain cancer and other severe neurological disorders without ever opening the skull. The mission is clear a future where treatments that once needed high-risk surgeries can be done with just a simple injection. So let's go across to her. Deblina joins us to explain how this technology works and what it could mean for the future of medicine and surgery. Good morning, Devlina. Thank you for being with us here today. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm doing very well. I'm excited to be here with you. Likewise. Devlina, let's start with the basics. What exactly is this injectable chip and what makes it different from conventional med medical implants that we've all heard of, seen of uh, and have spoken of through the years? So, just to give you a big bit of background, uh, 3 billion people around the world suffer from different brain diseases and mental illnesses like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, depression, PTSD, blindness, brain cancers. And drugs are mostly ineffective in treating them and they have a lot of side effects. And while it is known that if you can precisely electrically stimulate the neurons, that can be a very effective modality, those medical implants are highly risky. They require risky brain surgery, creating a hole in the skull and putting a centimeter scale probe in. And that is associated with risks of infection, morbidity and mortality. And because of the surgery related risks and $100,000 of surgery costs, such technologies are limited to less than 1% of the patients. So to overcome these challenges, what we have built are a tiny nano electronic chips, which can be introduced to the bloodstream and they travel seamlessly to the body fluid and they have the capability of autonomously recognizing a target disease region in the brain. And this is also the first demonstration of electronics which can even cross the intact blood-brain barrier and they self-implant in the disease region. And they can be wirelessly powered to provide very precise electrical stimulation of the neurons which can treat diseases uh, which are even uh, resistant uh, to drugs. Uh, so that is in short what this technology is about. Deep brain stimulation has been an effective tool for years now, but you're telling us about this very interesting phenomena, a tweak to how that really can happen inside your body. Devlina, what stage is the technology currently at? Are we looking at lab testing, animal trials or more, even further? Yeah, so we have uh, demonstrated this technology very robustly in animals. Uh, right now, we have uh, developed this tiny electronic chip and shown that these have record energy efficiency in terms of uh, harnessing wireless electromagnetic fields and converting them into electrical power from brain stimulation. We have also demonstrated the capability of them uh, of self-implanting in the disease region. Moreover, we have also results of their efficacy in multiple diseases. Uh, for example, in the area of Alzheimer's disease, uh, we have uh, shown that uh, with precise electrical stimulation, you can halt the basically spread of the pathology to neighboring brain regions. So it would be a preventative technology. It could prevent the development of the disease itself. In the area of brain cancer, we have shown that, uh, and you have worked with terminal brain cancers like glioblastoma and uh, pediatric brain cancers such as DIPG where the average uh, survival rate of patients after diagnosis is only 12 to 18 months and have shown that uh, where chemotherapy and radiation does not work mm -hmm. and these are uh, research we have done taking brain tissue from patients we have got from hospitals these are patients who have died because uh, radiation or drugs 
could not help them and with such tissues we have created human like brain cancer in animals and shown that with precise electrical stimulation you can actually completely halt the growth of uh, brain cancer where other technologies have failed so this can increase the survival of patients uh, to more than 85% this sounds very promising indeed deblina can this chip potentially treat diseases and conditions beyond the brain so can it go beyond uh, neurological disorders and diseases and to other organs because it's so very capable and this is me asking this question out of curiosity no this is actually a very good question so this technology is not just confined to the brain and can be applied to other parts of the body as well mm -hmm. because these are nano computers which can travel through the body fluids the vasculature which is a universal roadway and pathway towards uh, every uh, every nook and cranny of the body this uh, vasculature reaches so using that roadway these devices can reach those paths uh, so we have also been exploring applications such as um, wireless and non surgical pacemakers for example for heart or treating cancers or other parts of the body or tissue regeneration in other parts of the body so this is not a technology just confined to brain also beyond treating diseases this can be used for healthy individuals as well tiny nano computers which can reach the nook and cranny of the body can be used to sense anomalies in the body for health monitoring even in healthy mm. so it could detect an anomaly before it turns out turns into a devastating uh, disease it could be used for health monitoring mm. but also for human augmentation so not just for treating diseases but employing this capabilities and versatility of electronics to go beyond the basically the limitations of biology for example the Lina, if it sounds like, so promising and comes with so much ease i'm sure it was attempted at through the years uh, have there been any safety challenges why have we not seen this uh, really be successful all these years when people have had to opt for surgery tell us a little bit about the challenges that you've encountered through this phase i think there were major technical challenges that we had to overcome this build to build this technology because this was considered an impossible technology to start with um if i may say like for the first 2 years more than 35 grants i wrote got rejected in a row because reviewers mentioned that a uh, implant brain implant specifically which can be uh, non surgical was impossible so major technical challenges that you had to overcome was to build this tiny nano electronic chips which had record power conversion efficiency so small it is actually billion times smaller than a grain of rice so small that it can seamlessly integrate with the body fluids travel with the body fluids without causing any um Uh, uh hindering to the normal flow of cells these are devices which can integrate seamlessly into the brain creating a uh, brain computer symbiosis so we have shown that this technology is very safe and biocompatible they live co-live and coexist with the cells uh, without causing any damage the cells we have shown are actually completely healthy around uh, the brain cells but developing the technology itself was uh not easy national institute of health called this technology something from the science fiction novel mm -hmm. uh recently uh you know uh, the science museum called it um like stranger than science fiction mm -hmm. so this the technology itself was difficult to build uh, not yeah. an easy thing to achieve davlina have people come to you and ask to you, you know once this kind of technology goes inside the body Um, how can we trust it fully because there are people who are showing so much concern around your phones with uh, the kind of capability they carry how they're being able to absorb all the information in your surroundings could this not then repeat itself when a technology gets inside your body how do you address those kind of questions and fears yeah uh so the idea really is to communicate uh the human stories behind the science mm. so when we can make a blind person see again for the first time when you can alleviate pain and devastating neurological conditions where you can treat cancers which are otherwise terminal that's where the heart of our work lies 
So recently I met with a parent of a 10 year old child uh, who's, uh, who has been diagnosed with this terminal brain cancer called DIPG. And it was heartbreaking to hear from them that uh, all existing treatments have failed. So during my research journey, I came across so many families who are facing devastating neurological conditions. And what they are looking for is a ray of hope. They are looking for staying alive. So this urgency of human condition is what drives our research. And our research is actually supported by family members. For example, in a case of pediatric brain cancer by family members of children, family members who have lost their children to this devastating disease and who have made it to their mission so that other people do not have to suffer this unimaginable loss and they are well, supporting we're, we're us. We're so glad, Devlina, that you're finding the kind of support that you've been receiving. Tell us what happens once this chip ends, enters inside your body. So how long can it stay inside the human body safely? Does it dissolve on its own or need any sort of removal? What happens right after? So they can be made to stay inside the body for a shorter or longer term based on the application needs. Uh, so this could be chronic applications, for example, more than five years or for shorter application, which could be a matter of few months, for example, and that's based on the application. After the application period is over, the device can be designed and tuned so that uh, they dissolve away into biologically and environmentally benign materials uh, which are just cleared then naturally by the body system. Dablina, tell us about what we're looking at with this technology in terms of the India story. How accessible can this technology be here? It's a country where cost medical infrastructure vary widely. What are your hopes there? Yeah, so the main idea behind this technology is to make uh, this accessible to all. So millions of people around the world right now face impossible choices, either to go through a risky brain surgery, which costs like $100,000 uh, to go through su such surgery, or live with debilitating symptoms, uh, which uh, drugs cannot fix. By completely defying the need for surgery, we are actually breaking the barriers of uh, health risks, age as well as cost, which is preventing millions from getting treatment today. The idea for our technology is to bring this life-saving technology and make it accessible to all, where a brain implant is as simple and accessible as a vaccine. Deblina, that's all the time we have, but thank you so much for sharing your story, the wonderful initiative and all the very best for the magic that you're creating. Thank you for joining us on The Breakfast Club. Thanks a lot for having me.